Hello, my name is Lance Williams. Welcome to Healing Journeys Today. Today I want to talk to you about my testimony, my story. I'm going to have to leave a lot out for time's sake. It's just too much to share in this short amount of time. But I want to share with you some of my story. I want to share with you what I got myself into and what God got me out of, what He delivered me from. And so starting out, I was a really good kid. I don't even think I ever said a cuss word until I was about 14 or 15. I was an athlete, I was in sports, I played football, basketball, baseball, did the high jump and track and field, and really enjoyed it. My, so much so that my whole life revolved around sports. When I wasn't playing it, I was watching it. Uh, and I still like sports today. But at that point in my life, it was too much. It had too much of a place in my life. My whole life revolved around sports. And whatever your life revolves around, that becomes a God to you. It becomes an idol. That's what the Bible calls idolatry. And my life revolved around sports. Sports was my God. It's a false God. It's a, it's, my, my identity was in that. And when our identity is anything but Jesus, but the Lord Jesus Christ, it's, it's not good. Even if society says it's, ex says it's acceptable, because sports is acceptable. A lot of people like sports, and there's nothing wrong with sports in its proper, pro proper place. But in my life, it was my God. Now, I didn't see it like that at the time, but God revealed that to me later on. And since my identity was in sports, when sports failed me, then it shook me. It, it shook me to my core. It cracked my foundation. And when I was 15 years old, um, the doctors had diagnosed me with Crohn's disease. And I want to say it now because a lot of times my intentions are to say that and to tell later, later on in the story uh, how God healed me. And, and I may say that, but just in case I forget... Uh, or get off on something else, then I just want to communicate right now that I have been totally healed of Crohn's disease. God has totally set me free. The doctor said I'd have to have surgery over two to five years. Uh, that I, They put all these regulations on what I can eat, what I can't eat. And, but when I came to the Lord Jesus and got in His Word, I realized that the Bible, God's Word doesn't say I have to be sick. God's Word doesn't say I have to have Crohn's disease. God's Word doesn't put all these regulations on what I can eat and what I can't eat. Matter of fact, it's, it's the opposite. God's Word says that by the wounds of Jesus, I have been healed. It says that Jesus took my illnesses and bore my diseases. And I said, that's me right there. And really, I just forgot about it. I forgot about the disease that the doctor said I had. And I've been totally healed. I've been totally delivered. Hadn't had any problems in... That's been over 10 years now. Coming up on 11 years. And no issues because God has totally healed me. I've been totally delivered. So I just want to communicate that now. There's been so many times that I, you know, have intended to, to say it later on. And after, after I got done speaking at, at various places, I'm like, oh, wow, I forgot to tell that I got healed. So anyway, so I've learned to just say it while I'm thinking about it. But yeah, I came down with this uh, stomach issue and ended up uh, playing the last... Well, let me, let me back up. My ninth grade football year, I had a very successful season. Uh, with that came a, a lot of positive attention and it felt good. It was nice uh, having that attention for my success on the field. And, but the reason I even had the success to begin with is because I sought God to prosper me in that area. I used to pray and just ask God to prosper me in football, to, to cause me to succeed, and I'd say He did just that. My ninth grade football season, it was just miraculous. It was I actually, I actually had played beyond my ability, and it was it was totally God. And it's it's cool to to share how He done that, but right now I don't I don't have time to do that. Uh. But he, he just caused me to succeed. But with the, the last two football games, I played with a knot on my side. And later found out it was my intestines were swelling up. And they eventually swelled shut. And nothing could get through my intestines. 
I ended up having to have emergency surgery. I think it was the day after Christmas because I got sick on Christmas Day, woke up just throwing up, couldn't keep anything down. And the day after Christmas, had emergency surgery. They took out four inches of my colon. Uh, didn't, didn't get to eat for 21 days that time. And I wish I would have known about fasting then. I would have dedicated that to the Lord, but I didn't, didn't really know about fasting. Went 21 days without eating, had a tube in almost every hole in my body. It was, it was bad. Uh, it lost a lot of weight. Couldn't, like I said, couldn't eat. Um, it was a bad ordeal. And I couldn't couldn't play sports for a while. Even after I healed up, I couldn't play sports for quite a while after that. And I didn't know who I was. Like I said, it shook me to my core. It cracked my foundation. And I didn't realize it then, but I didn't know what to do with myself. And before the... I had uh, butterfly stitches. After they took out the other stitches, I had butterfly stitches. And... and well, see, they took out the the hard stitches. And then I... If I remember right. And anyway, I had these butterfly stitches on my stomach. And before I ever got them off, I, I got in a fist fight. And, which was just stupid. Because I could have split that open. Bad ordeal. Shouldn't have done that. But I got in a fist fight. I started drinking. Started smoking marijuana. It eventually led to anabolic steroids. Trying to get big and stuff. So... Because I started doing these drugs, I started developing this other lifestyle. Later on, when I started to play sports, I didn't leave this other lifestyle behind. And so uh, I started doing anabolic steroids, trying to get big and strong for playing sports. And, and really what happened is I turned and I started looking to other things instead of God to, to prosper me. Because when I was looking to God in my freshman season... God caused me to succeed. But when I started looking to steroids and other drugs to help me succeed in sports, it didn't work out. It, it did just the opposite. It destroyed my sports career. And so I turned to steroids and then also started doing cocaine on top of that. And it was, it was terrible. Again, I started looking to something else to cause me to succeed instead of God. And it just destroyed not only my sports career, but just destroyed my life. After the football season, I really was, I was causing a lot of hardship on my life. I ended up going to rehab my senior year. And eventually I got on to some stronger stuff. I got on to methamphetamine. And I was doing meth and cocaine at the same time. And eventually the meth just took over because it was a lot cheaper and, and more powerful. And went through a lot of hard things, you know, things I brought up on myself, a lot of hardship. It was, uh, it was bad. It was a dark time in my life, and it got even much darker later on. But anyway, I ended up sticking a needle in my arm and was shooting up cocaine and meth. And that was, that was bad. It completely took over my life. Uh, because there's there's people who do drugs, but then there's people who shoot drugs or inject drugs, and it's a it's a whole different ball game, and it's not good. It completely took over my life, and just was destroying me from the inside out. It was terrible, and ended up going to prison a couple times, which looking back was good, because it actually preserved me. It preserved me from destroying myself, because when I was not in prison or not in jail. I was just, I was shooting up multiple times a day. Shooting up is just slang. I was injecting meth uh, multiple times a day. And then there's just a lot of other stuff that just goes with the drug lifestyle that's just, just not good. The enemy was twisting my mind and causing me to, to be somebody, to become somebody that I never intended on being. And I didn't like who I was becoming. Because in the drug lifestyle, I opened myself up to all kinds of just ungodly wickedness. And then also opened myself up to literal demonic beings. And 
the enemy really isolated me. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable around people who cared about me. I only really feel comfortable around, I felt comfortable around this couple who was practicing black magic and a woman who I was actually in a relationship with who was into witchcraft. And I only felt comfortable, comfortable around this couple and this woman. And see, both of them had deceived me into thinking that that uh, they used to practice witchcraft, but it wasn't. They didn't do that anymore, and they had, they had both deceived me. And come to find out, they were still practicing, and they were practicing on me without me knowing it. <laughs> it's like I became a, a project for two different people in witchcraft, and yeah, dark, dark time in my life. So. Uh, a lot of demonic stuff going on, and long story short, I, I one night it, it it peaked in a way, it, and I actually was out at this couple's house that were was practicing black magic and was talking to them about the armor of God and the three-strand cord, because even though I used to get high on drugs and I was living ungodly, I still had a heart for God, and I still had a reverence and a, and a, a love for God. And I was out there talking about God, and that woman asked me to stand back to back with her and when I did something shot through my back and it felt like a claw raking over my heart not my chest but my heart and at that moment every muscle in my body drawed up and I just hit the floor and it took me a while to get it's like all the strength was zapped out of me and when I finally got the strength to get back up off the floor my body was in like a shock wave like convulsing and I it just I don't, I don't even know the right term to describe it, but it just freaked me out. I didn't know what to think. I'm sitting there looking at this couple, like, and they're acting like they had seen this before, and it was very suspicious. But they ended up deceiving me, because it was obvious that I encountered something of the spiritual realm. And, and I left out a lot of detail in that story. And it's one thing for me to even tell you the story. It's a whole different ballgame to have actually went through that. Because that night, a, a devil entered me. Some kind of demonic being entered me and was on the inside of me. Because after that, I was not liking who I was becoming. And that couple ended up deceiving me because it was obvious that I encountered the spiritual realm. And they ended up deceiving me into to getting me to think that I'd actually overcome some demonic force. When really, I realized later that I didn't overcome some demonic force. Some demonic force overcame me. And after that, I already wasn't liking who I was becoming. After this, it was just to a whole new level. I would get in trance-like states. I mean, just get in these trance-like states, and I would be doing things, and I, I would snap out of it, like, what am I doing? I would pack up everything in a bag and walk out to the middle of a field and just snap out of it, and like, what am I doing? And the scariest one was when I actually was going to somebody's house with a machete down my pants leg, and I was going with the intent to kill. And God snapped me out of it in a in an alleyway. It was that was miraculous. But it it was it was scary. I was beginning to be terrified of what I was gonna do. And anyway, it ended up leading to well let me let me say this first. Even though I had this terrible demonic encounter I experienced the spiritual realm and even though I had a love for God and a reverence for God I still had a lot of questions and at that time in my life I was asking God questions like God are you do you really exist <laughs> you know I know to me now that seems just so stupid I mean it's it's very obvious that he exists but at that time in my life I believed that he existed but I was like I just had questions and actually through experiencing this demonic thing, this demonic thing uh, entering me, then I actually went from trying to believe in God with a lot of questions to after that, after a demonic experience, knowing without a doubt that God exists. Because I knew if the spiritual realm exists, God exists. And so <laughs> it's, it's crazy because it's like God used something very evil and I don't believe God caused that at all. I know he didn't. I opened myself up to that. But he still used that to 
when I was asking him, God, do you really exist? Like I, through that experience, I realized, wow, God does exist. And so does the devil. Uh, because, you know, something obviously happened. And after that, I, it, it became obvious to me that there was something living in me that, that was not supposed to be there. And I could share so much detail on that, but I just, I'm not going to do it for time's sake. But I started seeking God for deliverance. And I didn't even really know much about deliverance. But I started seeking God, God, I there is something going on here. And I need this thing out of me. I need delivered. And long story short, I had been wanting to talk to this certain man for three years. Because people told me, when I would tell people surface level things, people just think I was crazy. But there were several people who told me, hey, you need to talk to this guy because this certain guy, he had, he had some similar experiences and gave his life to Jesus. He was one of the biggest drug dealers in town and he had a lot of spiritual encounters. And I was just seeking somebody to understand. And nobody really understood where I was at. But So several people said, you need to talk to this guy. And it was three years I was wanting to talk to him. Now, there was not a devil in me for three years, but I was having demonic, uh, demonic activity in my life for over three years. Uh, the devil was in me, the, the demon was in me for less than a year. It was, you know, probably four, five, six months. Probably four or five months, I'd say. But before that, like I said, I was having all this, this activity, this demon, demonic activity, and so I wanted to talk to this guy and uh, never, never could. People said they knew him, but people couldn't introduce me because he didn't hang out with those people anymore. He, he changed his life. But anyway, long story short, I ended up getting introduced to him at a grocery store, and he invited me over to his house. And it was interesting because God introduced me to this man I know, and he actually used that woman who was in witchcraft that was that had a, a evil intentions for me. Used her to introduce me because she knew him. Uh, from years before. So it's cool how even God used the uh, people people that was not for me, and God even used them like, like chess pieces in a way to, to introduce me to this guy. And met this guy. He invited me over to his home. When I walked into his home, I felt a peace I was not familiar with. And he later told me he prayed over the home and anointed the home. And we're talking, and I tell him what's going on, and he understood, he understood completely. Told me some stories that he had had, and I was like, finally, someone who understands where I'm at. And he ended up, we had a great conversation. He prayed for me to be delivered, prophesied over me that I would be filled with the Holy Spirit, speak with other tongues, be delivered. I didn't even know what being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking with tongues, was. But he invited me to his church, and Every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, I'd try to go, and something would keep me from going. Either I'd be too high, or that woman would talk me out of it, or something. But one Sunday night rolled around, I was like, I am going, and nothing is stopping me. Nothing is stopping me. And I remember, I, I went to that church, and that woman tried to talk me out of it, And I looked, but I looked at her very intently. I was like, look, I'm going tonight. You can stay here. You can go with me. And I went... And when I walk into the church, I lock eyes with this guy from a distance. And he stops the conversation he's in, and he walks over to me, and he's, he's looking at me. And I, it's really hard to explain, but when he was looking at me, it's like that beast in me, that, that demonic being on the inside of me, knew that this guy could see him. And I believe God was giving that man the discernment of spirits in that moment. But he ended up praying for me to be delivered. And I sat down uh, at the back of the church, not the very last row, but at, you know near the back. And uh, I'm, trying to think where, I'm trying to think what all I can share because I need to keep it to a certain time limit here. But I sit down at the back of the church, like I said, near the back, not the very last row. And... This preacher gets up, we go through worship, and this preacher gets up there, and he starts preaching, expect change, expect change. And something in me was like, he's, he's talking to me. But at this time, I, this demon started manifesting. I remember my face changing, and just, I could, 
it was just obvious. And I, I was scared of what was about to happen. I almost walked out of the church, but I stayed there. This demon literally manifested in the service. And I got up during the middle of this church service, and I took off running toward this preacher. And it, it wasn't an altar call. I was going with, with bad intent. And several guys grabbed me up, and I was just dragging all these guys across the church. Like they, I mean, several guys, and it wasn't even a match for this, the strength of this demon in me. But then the church circled around me, and they start praying in a weird language I thought then, and I now know it to be tongues. And when they were praying over me in tongues, this beast in me lost all of its strength to where this... I was dragging people across the church, several guys at one time. Now I didn't even have the strength to stand up. And I remember sitting down in this chair and this woman saying, Jesus is here, Jesus is here. And it's like the wall of the church just disappeared and I entered into the spiritual realm. And this great light got out, it, it, this great light come out of the sky and it came over me and it started raining on me. A very pure white rain with a little bit of gold mixed in with it. And at this time, I remember at some point during this telling the Lord, I want to be free from this. I want to be free from this. And, and I stood up, and it's like my arms were floating up toward the ceiling. Like I wasn't trying to raise them, but they were like floating up toward the ceiling. And, and at this point, I left my body, and I drifted up toward the top of this church. And I remember drifting up toward the top of the church, and I remember thinking this thought, that I think the stress was too much on me. I think I just died. That was my exact thought and my words to myself. It's like I was talking to myself. I think I just died as I'm floating up toward the top of this church. And I was up there. I don't know how long. The, the overall encounter was four hours. This was a, I was kind of complaining about going to a two-hour uh, Pentecostal church service, and I was there four hours getting delivered. <laughs> And, and so I'm, I'm up toward the top of this church and it's just like everything else just ceased to exist. And it was like just a direct connection between me and God Almighty. It was awesome. It's really hard to even explain in words. And I'm, I'm kind of running through this just for time. But when I come back to myself, my arms are stretched out one foot in front of the other like I'm hanging on the cross. And I look at my hands and it looked like physically something had been driven through my hands. And I literally had an encounter of being crucified with Christ. And what it was, was it was a deliverance. I miraculously got delivered from a demonic being that day. And after that, I felt a, another peace that I was not familiar with. But this time it was internal. And it was incredible. It set me free. And you might have think, well, after, you know, I would have thought anyway, after that encounter, man, you couldn't go back to drugs after that. And I certainly didn't think I would, but it was that night or the next day I started getting high again. And, but I would pray and say, God, how, how can I have this amazing encounter with you and keep doing what I'm doing? See, something had changed on the inside. And so I would literally just get high on meth, chain smoke my cigarettes, and just talk with God. And that's what I would do. Before, I'd get high and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but now I would just get high and talk with God. And one day I was out there talking with God, high as a kite, chain smoking my cigarettes, and God just touched my heart. And I had another encounter with Jesus where he, he literally like called my heart out of the grave. My heart came alive. Just like he called Lazarus out of the grave, he called my heart out of the grave that day. It's like I got a touch from God, and life was in me now. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And in that moment, he put his desire in me. And I'm praying for a way out. God, I want a way out. I just don't know how to change. And he showed me. He showed me that he, he's like, I already provided your way out a year ago. And I had an opportunity from my grandmother who retired from school counseling. She went to Karis Bible College in Woodland Park, Colorado. The family thought she was, a lot of the family thought she was crazy just from retiring from school and going back to school. And she had been inviting me several times to go with her, and I just rejected it and turned it down. Well, a year later, I had this amazing encounter. I'm praying to the Lord for a way out, and he shows me he's already provided that for me. So long story short, my grandmother comes home for Thanksgiving, and I do a shot of meth, and I get on a plane, and I go to Karis Bible College with her high on meth, and literally went to Bible College high. 
and got filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke with other tongues just as that guy prophesied over me, and just got totally set free. And it was awesome. And I haven't touched drugs since. And just I've been clean for almost seven years now. Been totally clean off drugs and been totally set free. And like I said, got filled with the Spirit and developed a love for the Word that I just didn't have before. And it was, it, it's been an incredible experience. I've been clean ever since. I finished Karis Bible College and graduated from the School of Ministry. And after that, started praying for a spouse. And God supernaturally led me, uh, uh, connected me with my wife. And it was a woman who I had a secret crush on when we were 13 or 14 years old. And neither one of us lived in our hometown anymore. But both of us went home for Christmas one day, and God divinely led us together. And six months later, we got married, and we are just a... We tell people we're not just a good fit, we're a God fit. And it is awesome. And she is she is the woman for me, and I'm the man for her. And it's, it's awesome how God put us together and reconnected us after all these years. And so we got married, and... And we, I was living in Oklahoma at the time. She moved down there to be with me. And God spoke to us about coming back up here to Woodland Park, Colorado uh, for her to do school. And then also I did the School of Practical Government at Karis Bible College. And I graduated in May and she's currently in her second year. And we're really just thriving in life. Before when I was just surviving, now I'm thriving in life. And God has done such wonderful things for me. But Karis Bible College, God started getting me rooted and grounded and established in the Word of God. And see, my identity, where it was in sports at one time, and then it was in drugs, uh, because my identity, my world, my life revolved around sports at one time, and then it revolved around meth and, and drugs. But now my life revolves around Jesus. And to where everything else brought me destruction, now God has brought me life and peace. And next week, I want to go into how I got established in the Word of God. And I want to go into to the practical side of, yes, God delivered me out of all this, but how did I continue to be transformed into His image? And even now, how am I continuing to be transformed into His image? And so that's what I want to talk to you about next week. And I know I just said a whole lot in just a short amount of time, but I hope this blesses somebody. And I believe it will. I believe, it, and it's not about, you know, it's just amazing what God has done. It's not about me. It's not about the bad things I did or, or even the good things I'm doing now. It's about what God has done. And he took me out of darkness, out of the devil's pit. And he has truly made something beautiful out of something that was just ugly. And he'll do the same for you. And so next week, I want to talk to you about how to be transformed. How to be transformed.